now that you've all sat down, let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Very much. You may be seated. And Cindy, will you call the roll? Commissioner Brian Hammond. Present. Renee Fortet. Here. Kevin Ruane. Here. Fran Myers. Here. Forrest Banks. Pamela Cronin. Here. Tony Laffey. Here. Colleen D. Pasquale. Here. Robert Wells. Here. Bill Wachulis. Here. Jeff Black. Here. Great. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the. Uh, March 12th, 2015, Tourist Development Council meeting. It's good to have you all here in the Annex building, or the Admin, Admin East building, we call it. Um, this morning, I would like to start off by taking a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the February 12th, 2015 meeting. Move. Second. I have a motion by Mary Wayne and a second by Pam Cronin. Uh, any discussion, board members? Are there any objections? No objections, motion carried. All right, and uh, at this time, we'd like to ask if there is anybody in the public who wishes to be heard this morning. We'll give you a chance to step up to the podium and share a few comments. Go ahead and state your name for the record. Good morning, Jack Carver Ooh. <laughs> with the Arby Trade Association. Uh, it's been a while since I've been here. We've been very busy this past season. We just completed our third event um, last week at Jemaine Arena. We've done about 17,000 people so far over the season. It's been a, a terrific run. Um, RV sales are up. As I'm sure Frank can to mention about that, she's packed probably. Um, we've got one more to go at the sports complex. So we've had a great season so far. So thank you. Thank you very much. Good news. Good to hear. Is there anyone uh, else in the public who wishes to be here? Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Um, good morning. Carol Ubermeyer from the airport. I just wanted to say a few things about we're having a fantastic um, year so far. Uh, as you know, I don't know if you've seen some of our TV spots. Our San Juan will be starting May 3rd. It will be twice weekly. Um, the TV spots are on uh, NBC before the Today Show, and they are on Sunday CBS News. We're doing a lot of print, um, radio, Latin, Latino radio, Hispanic papers, news press, Naples Daily News, and we have a wonderful partnership with Sun Country. and. Um, we are looking at some really exciting new destinations with Sun Country, and um, we will be going next week to Puerto Rico to meet with the state tourism folks, um, the mayor, the Federation of Mayors, and um, to do news conferences and to get the people excited in San Juan and Puerto Rico to come here, too. So it's a win-win, and we're looking to partner with the TDC, the VCB, which we always do. And um, we just want to give you a little update on San Juan and um, our Canadian numbers are doing fantastic. I mean, we have, um, this summer, they're actually going to double up their capacity, Air Canada and WestJet. So all good news at the airport, and it's thanks to everybody here. So thank you. Good deal. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. and uh, good to hear about new relationships and new markets. Yeah. Anybody else from the public who wishes to be heard this morning? Okay, seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Uh, let's look at municipalities. Good morning. Um, I'm Anita Saraceda. I'm the mayor of Fort Myers Beach. Um, I want to piggyback on Carol's comments and tell you all that um, aside from my duties with the town, I have two retail stores in Times Square, uh, one since 1985. This is our best year ever. Last year was our best year ever until this year came along and we are up 40%. 40%. It is an extraordinary season on Fort Myers Beach in every way, and I want to thank you all so much for everything you have done in consideration of our community. Uh, it's working, uh, and working tremendously. We appreciate it uh, more than we can say. I also want to invite you to the social event of the season, which is this weekend, and that's the Shrimp Festival. Uh, anybody who's anybody comes to the Shrimp Festival on Fort Myers Beach, but get there early because the, the bridge closes. We have a parade, and then it's a wonderful day of festivities. So we hope to see you there. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mayor. And sitting here. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Judy Zamama. I'm the city manager of Sanibel.
Again, for the record, my name is Judy Zamama. I'm the city manager of Sanibel. And I wanted to share th two items with the TDC. They both relate to um, customer service. One is, um, for the last several years, like many of you in the tourism industry, we try to find ways to track our visitor satisfaction. And so, as a city, I wanted to let you know that we track very carefully the comments on uh, TripAdvisor. And we've been using that to direct us and guide us on we, how we try to continue to enhance, as I know many uh, of those in the, in the uh, business do, but in an effort to get the satis what people really like about our destination and particularly the facilities that the city of Sanibel operates for the TDC. And, and we track two main categories. We track the excellence and the terrible and poor. Uh, the average comments, we don't, we don't get a lot of average, as you can see from the uh, uh, pie charts. But we really want to know, and we don't get very many negative comments, as you can see, but I want you to know that at the executive staff level, we share this information with all of our directors. We try to respond to any of the poor or terrible specifically. And then again, we've used the excellence to really direct us in seeing what people do like about Sanibel. I do want to read to you um, one TripAdvisor posting that was posted on January 29th of this year, 2015. Because I think it uh, also uh, not only indicates the quality of service we try to provide to our visitors, but the excellent partnership we have with the TDC. And the comment was written on, um, uh, again, January 29th, the five stars for Bowman's Beach. And the, category, the topic or the headline was, Beautiful Beach, Helpful Police Department. This is a beautiful beach. You have to walk a bit to get to the beach from the parking lot, across a river, through some trees, so it's quiet and secluded because on the way, the island is positioned in the Gulf. It's a seashell collector's dream. My husband lost his cell phone while we were there and didn't notice it till we were gone. After we got back to Chicago, I reached out to the Sanibel Fort Myers Visitors Bureau to see if they have a lost and found. They didn't have the phone, but they suggested I call the Sanibel Police Department. I did. They actually had the phone, and they mailed it back to us. I could not believe it. Five stars to the city of Sanibel and their friendly, helpful police department. So, of course, uh, TDC doesn't fund the police department, but because of our partners. <laughs> <laughs> but, and that's part of the city's contribution to our visitor experience. But the working in partnership, I think that really speaks to what we all try to provide our visitors. So, thank you very much. You know, when you hear great stories like that, it's no wonder why so many return visitors come back every year to, to this area. Thank you guys for, for the great hospitality that you have out there. Are there any other municipalities to be heard this morning? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and close. And uh, I'll move on to the report of the executive director, Tamara. <coughs> well, I will admit to you, I'm a little bit tired from my recent travels. Um, uh, returned from ITB on Sunday evening and immediately turned around and went up to Tallahassee to participate in Tourism Day yesterday with a little bit of a long drive back last night. But um, I am kind of pinching myself over the numbers I'm about to report to you. Um, Anita, I think uh, what we see, Mayor Sarah Seabees, in the, in the numbers, what you said is reflected in these numbers very well. Um, for January, uh, bed tax revenue was up 36.9%. Um, you know, I. Honestly, I, I said to the clerk's office, run the numbers again, <laughs> because I thought perhaps maybe it was a mistake, but it is not. Um, it, it, is, it is, in fact, the number for the month. I think what we're seeing is, um, if you'll remember last January, we had a very, very cold year in the Northeast, and um, known as the polar vortex, and we all jokingly said, could we have another one next year? Um, but I think what happened, talking to the hoteliers uh, and, and some of the folks, uh, with the vacation rentals is people booked last year for this year because they had had such a miserable experience. And I think the other thing we're seeing is people are booking longer stays. So they're not only coming, but they're actually staying for a longer period of time. And for some people that may be, you know, a long weekend turns into a week. And for other people it may be one week turns into one month. I mean, depending on their circumstances. Um, so that is very good news for our community. Uh, when you look at the year-to-date, up almost 24%. Um, as you know, for us, we work on a fiscal year, so that's October through January. So that is one quarter, uh, I mean, excuse me, one third of our year. Uh, so up 24% for the first third of the year. In terms of the Smith Travel Research Report, uh, as you would suspect, those numbers are also very positive. A significant increase in both occupants 
and ADR, both uh, occupancy nearly 13%, ADR up uh, 12% for a combined rev par of 26.3, uh, room revenue up 27.6%, uh, slight increase in the number of available rooms and a 14% increase in uh, rooms sold. And uh, you know, more importantly, uh, when you look at the STAR report and you see how that compares to uh, other destinations that we consider in our competitive set, we had a fantastic January in comparison. Um, it, as Carol told you, traffic at the airport is up. Um, their uh, January increase was 9.9%. Uh, Fantastic January for them. So very good news at, at the airport as well. Um, before I bring Laura up to give you uh, the marketing report, I wanted to share with you that, um, as I mentioned last month, we're on a tear to fill a few staff positions. And I get today to introduce our newest member of um, visitor services staff, and that is Jason Glasscott. Jason, would you stand up so they can see you? Thank you. <laughs> Jason uh, has honed his customer uh, satisfaction skills as a sales and service representative for uh, Centus Corporation in Fort Myers. He is also a 14-year veteran of the U.S. Navy. He became skilled in management, administration, and analysis of numerous training programs there. He has extensive volunteer uh, recruitment and management experience uh, that he uh, honed while he was working at uh, Norfolk's Potter House Church. And um, he also works at Potter's House Church here in Fort Myers uh, in his spare time. Um, we are really happy to have Jason on our team. I, I know the volunteers are really uh, beginning to get to know him and enjoying his presence there. And, uh, Jason has a bachelor's degree in business uh, economics and a master's of arts in theological studies from Liberty University. So welcome, Jason. And with that, I'm going to ask Laura if she'll give her report. Thank you. And good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Here we go. Um, so we all feel how well we're doing, and we look at the numbers and it reflects it. But how are we doing in comparison? Tam talked about it for a moment. I'd like to share a few more um, comparisons just to give context on how we're, how we're really doing um, with everybody else. So if we're looking at year over year for 2014, as you can see from the chart, if we just talk visitors and not bed tax increase, but visitors, um, the state of Florida did very well, nearly 4%. We did a little better, 4.3 which is great, um, on job growth, the state of Florida 3.6, again strong, um, we did five points higher, 8.7% in 2014. When we talk about domestic visitor growth, as you can see on the chart, Florida was 4%, which is great, we were 10. Um, overseas growth, this is where we can see what the supplemental um, funding last year did when we aggressively went into Canada, I think, and internationally. Pleased to um, say that Florida was a strong 2% on overseas growth. Um, we were 165 and for the Canadian market, Florida was 2.4, we were 25.9. So that's, um, we, we, we're doing okay. Um, the competitive set, and when we look at what Tam just mentioned, how we are with the guys we're competing with um, in Southwest Florida, 2014, 2015, this is just for January. These are January figures, and we're talking about occupancy comparison. So as you can see, no, um, no news in that we're beating the United States and Florida, but if you look at the number of points we're beating our competitors, um, it's a good place to be and to keep stoking the fires. So as you can see, which I was reluctant to point out, but I'm going to anyway, 2014, Collier was a little ahead of us. This year, or 2014, I am happy, that was 2014. 2015 for January, I'm very pleased to report that we're almost 10 points ahead of them. So that's all good stuff. So that's the context. Now what's coming up? How are we going to keep this going? And how are we going to keep stoking these fires? Um, first of all, I'm very pleased to announce in the very, very um, soon, we will be doing a New York City media promotion. 
um, we are doing takeovers of both, both Hearst and Time Inc. headquarters. Um, we're working with our great partners at Pinchers on this one, and we will be using locally caught shrimp and stone crab to introduce our fresh and natural destination. I want to say this is a brand awareness campaign. They let other destinations do this as well. Um, the introduction is through their cafeterias. Fortunately, as we all know, we've got some uh, great Gulf fisheries and a great product to introduce our destination with. The good news is we get to talk about the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel to over a thousand editors and publishers and look at some of these mags. Um, and they're digital. Um, so again, we're talking about travel and leisure, coastal living, um, Women's Day, Food and Wine, Esquire Red Book. These are just a sampling, Town and Country, Time, Oprah. Um, we will be taking over Time, Inc. on April 29th and Hearst Headquarters on April 30th. That should be a good one. Um, World Expo, we talked about this a little last time. I'm going to take a little deeper dive on this. And please know, we're still working with Brand USA, the State Department, the USA Pavilion Producers, and the James Beard Foundation on the exact details of this promotion. Um, but the wheels are turning, and these are the things we do know. Okay, first of all, um, a quick story. I was talking to Rob, our international, our UK um, contractor um, for PR and sales, and Rob told me that he had just taken a look at how we look on TripAdvisor when we take out the domestic uh, comments, when we take out domestic rankings. The very interesting thing and very good news here is that Rob recounted to me who our competitive set is globally, and that would be the Seychelles, Mexico. Bermuda, Cuba. We are positioned so strongly in the global marketplace that we are seen as one of the great beach destinations, not of Florida, but of the world, as, as we are. So that's really good news. So in knowing that context and looking at what we're doing here, again, on a global scale, is we're placing Fort Myers in, in this global dialogue. Most Europeans think of Florida, and they think of Miami, and they think of Orlando right? There's another unique treasure in Florida, and we're making sure that globally people recognize that. Um, the VCB's participation will position the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel as a place of fresh natural abundance, and we will use this opportunity for destination education on these key differentiators. Um, I want to qualify. This, is, this isn't a culinary initiative. Much like we used art in the Chicago initiative last year, this is a brand awareness campaign. So, um, we are working with Brand USA, who is responsible to, as we are, to drive visitation. So that's what all of this is about. Okay, so as you know, Expo 15 is one of the three renowned global events, the Olympics being one, the World Cup being the other. Um, and our president at Expo is in partnership with Brand USA. You've heard me say many times, we're very happy standing on the shoulders of the giants that can propel us even higher. Um, this year, one of their brand content development pillars is great American food and great American food stories to introduce destinations to the world. So fortunately, the USA Pavilion this year is showcasing, well, all the pavilions. The Expo um, theme is food. So Expo runs, a little, little background on Expo, it runs for six months beginning in May of 2015. Overall, through the whole run of the thing, the anticipated attendance, look, I should put on my glasses. Ah, yeah. oh, there I go. Um, anticipated attendance is 30 million for the run of the fair. Um, Two million have already been sold in China, with over a billion unique views expected on the ex Expo website. I want to be very clear, we're positioning our brand for a shorter period of time. However, our digital presence, which will include destination information, our global Lonely Planet, all the languages of Lonely Planet, and our website will be um, eternally live. So there's no time frame on that. Um, our brand integration will take place May 22nd to June 11th. As I mentioned, this year's Expo core theme is Feeding the Planet, Energy for Life, and the USA Pavilion will feature US destinations um, through exhibits and programs. We'll use our Gulf seafood to introduce the audience to our natural preserve destination through our Gulf fisheries. There are two distinct components to our presence at Expo. One is Food Truck Nation. Food Truck Nation will exist behind the, ex the 
USA Pavilion, I just showed you there, um, and will be the largest, what is considered food court of Expo. During our activation, one of the food trucks will feature our seafood and our area's tropical flavors, and will include our branding in the form of um, logos, videos, um, and, uh, and other types of interaction that we're still, again, still discussing, but definitely we'll be blanketing it with our presence visually and in video. Um, we will also have a presence at the James Beard Foundation restaurant. Um, the James Beard Foundation restaurant will be located actually in central Milan, outside of Expo, and will feature menus developed by Beard Award-winning chefs using our seafood to introduce diners to our destination. Um, what I'm going to mention too as well is um, these chefs will be working with our local product, they will be educated in our destination, and these are among the top influencers um, in culinary and in lifestyle um, in the world, so we're very happy. Um, okay, both of these areas will be available to us to host media events. Um, and again, the VCB's participation it, um, will introduce all of our natural beauty um, to the public, press, and top media influencers. The content we develop, including recipes by the Beard Award winning chefs, will be featured throughout our VCB assets um, and media placements. At the same time, that all of this is going on. We're working with all of our international contractors um, and we'll be purchasing media in our key markets. That includes Germany, the UK, Scandinavia, France, Canada, and our major US destinations. Okay, so that's it for Expo. And I'll take questions at the end if anybody has any. Um, for our spring and summer media, and this was a part of our regular buy, um, you can see, and I'm going to pull this up, what can I see? Um, okay, we're in some great things coming up. Um, coastal living, endless vacations. We already, in the last few weeks, you may have seen our shell bag offers in Family Circle, Family Fun, and Midwest Living. Um, we expected about 2,000 people to call and request shell bags. We had 30,000 people request our shell bags in three days. So, um, yeah, it's a good buzz. Um, we are also in... Uh, Texas Monthly this year, the Nature Conservancy and Travel and Leisure. Um, this summer, we'll be doing our in-state um, newspaper inserts. We'll be launching radio within the next few weeks in Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, and Indianapolis. Um, thanks to your yes votes and the supplemental income, our television will start in Boston, Chicago, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, Dallas, Houston, Indianapolis, New York City, and St. Louis. I've got to remind you too, when we're hitting on broadcast, I'm also hitting, we're hitting hard on digital. We're really looking at a multi-platform messaging, so you can't miss us. If you, you know, if you walk out of the room for the TV, you're still checking your phone, and guess what? We're going to find you there um, if you're searching for travel and beach travel. Um, we are certainly in uh, some major fishing and outdoor publications because we know they stay a long time and they spend a lot too. Um, coastal Angler, Florida Fishing and Boating, Florida Sport Fishing, um, and Radio my, uh, this summer, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second, in Miami, Orlando, Tampa, and West Palm. Um, digital, as I mentioned, we're doing some really great stuff and stuff that's really delivered for us. TripAdvisor, Travel Zoo, um, Travel Ed Networks, we're targeting, we're retargeting, we're doing international with digital. We're doing um, Expedia, not only uh, we're doing Expedia in France, TripAdvisor in Germany, the UK, and Canada. Um, we're working very, very closely with Brand USA, and we're really happy with what the partnership has, done, has been able to do for us internationally. Um, so international print as well, we really like the UK Telegraph. Overall, the estimated numbers of impressions were at about 333 and a half million impressions for this upcoming season. So those are good numbers. Um, and in case you were scared that this wrapped vehicle would not be going around the state saving people with the shell, um, people in Florida are going to be saved by the shell again this summer. Um, now I'm very pleased to introduce Katie Meckley, who will talk to you about a um, social promotion we're doing. Hi, so I get to talk to you about the social, which you guys know is my favorite. Um, I'm really excited. We're going to do a huge Instagram promotion this year, which is our first time doing an Instagram promotion. Um, Instagram is now one of the top growing social platforms, 
And we've seen our numbers on our site grow exponentially just in the la next last two months, um, which is really amazing considering they just did a big dump of um, non-qualified Instagram users. So we are doing a program, um, hopefully out of season, we'll see how the season goes, but it's adjustable. Um, but our plan is to bring down four sets of, or four influencers, four weekends in a row, um, late April, early May, if we can find availability in the hotels. If not, of course, we can adjust that. Um, we've picked topics that we feel represent our destination really well, and we will have them come down um, for hopefully four days, um, depending again on what accommodations are available. <laughs> and um, they will be required to do certain activities while they're here. They're required to post twice a day on their Instagrams. And then we give suggestions. Um, we don't give them a packed itinerary for the pure reason that we want them to explore the destination. We did a different influencer campaign last year that worked really well with by doing this. Um, and so we're hoping, and we know that it's gonna work like this again. Um, our goal is to generate 2,500 new Instagram followers, but we're more concerned about the engagement. We want to get people talking about the destination all over Instagram, so that's the goal. We're picking influencers based on their followings. So here's an example. We haven't selected our influencers yet because we'll do it by topic and availability and talk with them. Um, this Julia Hengel has 388,000 Instagram followers. So what we're looking at with this is not only her number of followers, but the amount of engagement her followers have. So we want to make sure that her, engage, or her followers are reposting, that they're talking about the destination, and they're engaging. So this is an example of one of the people we may invite down. And then JD Andrews has a smaller following of just under 24,000, but look at his photography. Um, and a part of this con or a part of this promotion will be as a part of their contracts, which we have them sign ahead of time, when they get home, not only will they post while they're in the destination, but when they get home, um, part of their contract is they will provide us with 20 high res images that we can use in any marketing platform we want. So that will give us 80 new amazing images that are user generated content that people have actually taken in the destination to use, as well as all the engagement we're hoping that this will bring or we know it will bring. Um, so I'm really excited about this and looking forward to fleshing this out and seeing the results. Does anybody have any questions for either of us? Yes, hi, Rob. I had a, uh, just a couple specific questions on the international market, and we've seen such like great improvements there. Um, I know we made some, some changes in those in the people that were representing us, and then I know that we've done a pretty big PR push along with our with our advertising firm. Uh, what, what do you, you guys, when you get together, credit um, some specific things that you credit for that success, both in Canada and I guess you didn't show um, most of Europe separate from Canada, but I would assume you've had some success there with some of those changes as well, correct? Yeah, I, I would say we are very fortunate under the perfect storm. Um, we started working with Brand USA and they, uh, as they were getting their legs under them and were a, and, uh, essentially a founding partner with them. So everything they did, we did with them. At the same time, the economy's going well. We made some, as you mentioned, contractor changes. Importantly, we took the supplemental money that was given last year, we started placing more international media buys than we had had the opportunity to in the past. So all those things together, and the weather, and the economic climate, we're expecting based on conversations with Brand USA that th this will last about at least another year. So we're going in hard and strong now, especially with our repeat visitation. We're fairly certain that we can sustain this. And I'd like to, Tam, if you have any comments on this, we were, you know. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, Rob, honestly, um, we talk about this internally. I think domestically, you know, we're seeing modest growth in visitation domestically, but I think we steal those from each other. <laughs> um, you know, we steal them from Miami next year. Miami will steal them from St. Pete. We'll steal them from, you know, it, it's, a, it's a constant battle on who's grabbing who domestically. I really believe our greatest growth opportunity is international. And, and it's, you know, it's a hot button right now. I mean, you're talking about additional air service into Florida. You know, there are a lot of reasons why this is a great growth opportunity. Um, Bill and Tony, I think you would agree, Visit Florida sees much of the same thing. And, um, you know, we're, we're going hard after the international side. Um, you're right, we've changed contractors. We stepped up our game there. 
gone with a, a, a bit larger effort in terms of our contracts internationally, and, and it's paying off. I mean, I think you see the results of a really concentrated, you know, we're going to strike while this opportunity exists. Brand USA being out, being out there promoting the United States doesn't hurt, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, I think we've done a good job of positioning ourselves. And when you look at our growth compared to some other sections of Florida, now don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, when you look at Miami and the Brazilians, I mean, they're great. You know, there are other people that are growing. They're not necessarily growing from the same markets we are as much. You know, we pretty much, I don't want to say we own Germany, but we almost do. Um, you know, I mean, it's really strong for us. The state of Florida had uh, 500,000 visitors from Germany last year. We had 260,000 German speakers in Lake County last year. So keep that in mind. I mean, we're really dominating Germany for the state of Florida. So, but it's not just Germany. I mean, the Canadian growth has been phenomenal. You know, there's a reason they want to add additional air service, right, Carol? The planes are all full. I mean, you know, so, you know, we're creating a lot of pressure to, to um, you know, a, kind of a pressure cooker of activity and, and interest in the destination. So I think that's really what you're seeing. It, you know, it's good news for everybody. And I think you like them in your hotels, right? They stay longer. They, you know, spend a little more money. It's it's good for everybody. I'm going to add one more point, and this is we should never forget this. We're at a critical notion in the history of communication. We've seen in the past five years the voices, messaging voices, go from the very very few to case in point to everybody. Um, we have a product that will back it up that stands. In, uh, globally, in, in a globally important conversation, and now a million, millions and millions of people are having it, more than just a few voices who held the power before. So, I, I, Rob, I really think that shift in messaging, especially um, in, internationally, has really helped us as well. Does that help? Thank you. Yes. Um, you know, I've noticed a lot of our international market. percent of our clients are from uh, Europe. In first so quarter. In the first quarter, just in That's this impressive. month, this week alone, I've got at least 10 people that are there that I don't know what the heck they're saying. I can't understand them. <laughs> so, um, but I know I see a lot of people from France, too. A question about the, the expo, the time yeah. that you're going to be there, and are you going to be with your branding exclusive? Are you going to be sharing it with other destinations? How does that kind of fit into the, the, the pavilion? All these details are being worked out. Um, I right now the conversations are actually even how in the exhibition space of expo we make sure our destination is featured that's not a pay that's not included with it that's just us aggressively pursuing every signage and branding opportunity we can so uh, i am happy to as soon as everything gets back get back to you guys um because at this point i've seen what the signage will look like um and where the video monitors will be but a uh, participation of other u.s destinations is still information i'm waiting for as well i think it's an exciting place to be i think you guys it's a to really kind of penetrate that market more is kind of really important to be at that Thank you. One, one quick observation. I noticed on the very first slide, Laura, your competitive set only included three counties, Collier, <laughs> Manatee, and Pinellas. Um, didn't we used to have other outfits out there in our competitive set? Am I mixing this up with the Star Report? No, 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 you're not. We actually have different, as I spoke to globally, we have different competitive sets for different things different things, and I think it's kind of evolving. Um, I, I would say domestically, our competitive set certainly still top, and Tam, tell me if you disagree. Is, well, go ahead. I think you're looking at the West Coast there. I think yes. we just sort of threw up the West Coast was what we were trying to do. But in the Star Report, we include Miami and yeah. Fort Lauderdale and the Keys, just you know, uh, uh, as a comparison. But I think what we were trying to show you was just West Coast of Florida kind of looking at at, at the West Coast, but that's, and that is from the Star Report, the sources and on there, but that is the Star Report. Yes, hi. Good morning. Uh, with, you know, people being very price conscious when they shop uh, and the dollar getting stronger, are we, are we concerned about other destinations with our ADRs rising, uh, of losing uh, some share to Mexico and some of these other price points which are below us? Is this, a, is this something that we want to be concerned about? Absolutely. It's something we're watching very carefully. And with Cuba, 
I, I, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, no worries. I, 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 they're clearly, globally, our competitive set. Um, so it, it's a concern. I, I think it'll balance out. But again, I've got to say, and I'll defer to Tam for her comments on this as well, with our repeat visitation numbers um, we're s and our natural assets, we're really strongly positioned. I will say to you, you know, I just came back from Germany and a lot of conversation about the euro. And, you know, the euro was down, depending on when you're looking at it, 25, 30 percent. And, um, you know, absolutely there's concern about what's going to happen with the euro. I think a couple of things. One, um, you do, I don't think you're going to have to worry about 2015 because they've already bought in for their trips for 2015 and they bought in at last year's rate, at last year's euro. They're paid, those trips are paid for. Um, they... Um, so, so there, there isn't a lot of worry about what's going to happen in 2015. However, for 2016, everybody's all eyes on. But I had a really good conversation. There's a, there's a, a, a gentleman who's on the Visit USA Switzerland um, uh, uh, board, and he and I, he's an economist. My background is economics, so we always have a very good conversation. He does believe that the euro is undervalued. The question is, do the markets bear that out, right? I mean, at the end of the day, does it bear it out? But I promise you we're keeping a close eye on it, Tony. Cool. And, you know, that's not going to affect Canada. You know, no. it, it's not going to affect the U.K. It's going to affect our German visitors. The other thing I think about our German visitors is um, we're not the bargain German destination. There are other destinations that are bargain German destinations. So. I, I think again, you know, we may we may lose some of the bargain shoppers, but our solid, um, high income uh, visitor from Germany probably is not going to react because their portfolio went down. I think. Let's have Bill and then uh, Mayor Ruane. Bill, did you have a question? Well, you just answered my question. I want to know what the mood was of IDB. But, but, but I guess my next one is just a statement. Just keep an eye on Booking.com. We're getting a lot of traffic internationally from Booking.com. And they're on our list. Well, I, absolutely, and you know, we're hearing that across the board. Unfortunately, we keep an eye on them, but they don't sell ad space. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Um, Any further questions for the marketing folks? Okay. Thank you very much. Great Thank report. you. All right. And uh, that the executive director report. That, that does conclude my report. All right. At this time, I'd like to call up Rachel Ketterman from Florida Tracks and Trails for our special presentation. Hi there. And good morning. Here we go. Like magic. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Um, first, on behalf of Florida Tracks and Trails and myself, I'd like to thank um, all of you for having us here today. This is a, a great honor to uh, be able to present the park. Um, I am the marketing director, uh, Rachel Ketterman, marketing director for Florida Tracks and Trails. I'm also a local to the area. Uh, born and raised here, grew up on Sanibel Island, so um, I have you all to thank for the traffic, but um, also for the, the tourism that you bring to this area, which we all uh, very much rely on. So you've done a fabulous job, and um, thank you for that. Ah, wrong button. The fancy remote. There we go. And so for those of you who haven't heard about uh, Florida Tracks and Trails, or, or FTT is, is what you'll hear me refer to it as, you're probably wondering what is Florida Tracks and Trails. Despite the title, we are so much more than just tracks and trails. Located on 1,000 acres in Punta Gorda, uh, Florida Tracks and Trails is Florida's newest theme park. 
Uh, we offer the ultimate outdoor recreation and entertainment. And we like to consider ourselves the Disney World of uh, the outdoor uh, recreation world. The park is located on I-75 at exit 174 in Punta Gorda and is a short drive inland off Vermont Road. Uh, currently, the park has two main operation areas, um, including those is the entertainment grounds, which perfect, highlighted there. Um, we also have our recreation park, which is really everything outside of that. And each area operates as its own entity, so its own gate system, its own admission system, um, its, its, its own roadways that will take you to each area of the park. And the attractions offered inside include motocross, paintball, uh, OHV, which is off-highway vehicle trails, uh, Freshwater Beach, and the entertainment grounds. The first attraction I'll review with you is motocross. Uh, for those unfamiliar with the sport of motocross, it's considered the NASCAR to the motorcycle community. For motocross at Florida Tracks and Trails, the facility is, is one of epic proportions. Um, unlike traditional facilities, Florida Tracks and Trails offers four motocross tracks all the way from your peewee level, which is children as young as three and four years old, all the way to your pro level. So in between, we do have a beginner track and an amateur track. We moved a half a million yards of dirt to construct our motocross facility. That's actually a picture of when our, our grass just went down, so I know it looks lo a little psychedelic, but it doesn't look like that now. Um, we are also an AMA-sanctioned facility already for motocross with the American Motorcyclist Association. The same emphasis that we put into motocross also went into our paintball park. We've dedicated over 80 acres of space for our paintball facility. Included in this uh, are, are various different fields, and um, we're very lucky to bring on Mike Paxson, who is our paintball manager. He is the number one pro paintball athlete in the world. Um, he moved here from California to work on our project. So the concepts that we have here have, have been introduced by him and, and really are spectacular. Seven different scenarios, everything from your tournament style um, speedball fields to uh, a field that we call China Beach, which is a tiki village. And um, we even have a Splatmaster course for, for the young kids. It's a more delicate style play rather than your, your CO2. In addition to motocross and paintball, FTT has carved out over 22 miles of one directional OHV trails for ATVs, UTVs, go-karts, golf carts, and dirt bikes. So we do not allow buggies or Jeeps or three-wheelers inside the park. We are dedicated solely to OHVs. And very much like a ski resort, um, the trail systems within Florida Tracks and Trails vary based on difficulty level and are, are clearly marked throughout. So we have your, your bunny trails all the way up to your black trails. The landscape within the park is really something that we boast. Uh, the integrity of the environment was very important to us when we, we started developing this park. Uh, prior to uh, becoming an adventure park, it was grazed land cattle. And we've, uh, we've, we've kept all of the um, thick brush areas, the treed areas intact, and used the open grass spans to uh, create the parking lots and, and all of the, the items that would require any sort of removal. We also have a beach. Uh, with, with, you know, some families, they may enjoy the riding, they may enjoy paintballing, but some may, may prefer to relax in the sun, which they can do at, at our fresh, freshwater beach. This is a 12-acre area where pure white sand and fresh water come together um, to make what I like to consider a glorified waiting room. Uh, food and beverage services will be, for be provided here at the beach, um, shaded cabanas, shallow kid play areas, volleyball courts, uh, really all, all types of the beach atmosphere being brought inland. And um, what's unique about this beach is it's connected to our motocross spectator area. So the parents that are at the park watching their kids go around and around all day long from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., they now have uh, a nice little outlet to um, relax at and break up the day. The other um, large attraction within the park is our entertainment grounds. 
um, at just under 55 acres, the entertainment grounds within Florida Tracks and Trails is one of the largest venues, entertainment venues now in the state of Florida. Um, on this property, we can fit about uh, 40,000 people per day um, on, this, on this lot. And it's comprised of two components. We have our uh, outdoor lawn, and then we also have a 40,000 square foot indoor entertainment facility that will be a, a phase two um, construction um, component for the entertainment grounds. All levels of productions can be held here from rodeos to fairs to concerts to multi-day festivals such as the Country Life Music Festival, if any of you have, have heard that. Additional amenities. For those who don't own their own OHV, um, Florida Tracks and Trails is providing a rental facility. So travelers, visitors to the area who do want to enjoy the park uh, will have the ability to do so via our rental department. We'll have um, everything from your, your quad four-wheelers to your side-by-side -side units, which are more family-friendly units. Same goes for paintball gear and equipment. Everything's available on site for, for guests. Uh, we also have pro shops on site for motorsports and paintball, fully stocked with gear and equipment, really everything from um, the basics to the exclusive items that are mainly sold online now. We do have a general store for all of your basic needs, um, and, and that will really cater a lot to the motocross riders who um, are very picky about what they eat and drink. They, they like their energy drinks. Um, we also have food and beverage services throughout the park and party pavilions for birthdays, special occasions, graduations, all of the um, more private group events. What else? Staff safety and security. Um, Florida Tracks and Trails, one of their top priorities is safety and, and having a controlled environment for their guests. So we work very closely with the, um, the local law enforcement and emergency services to, cre to create a project-specific safety plan. Um, it includes uh, emergency vehicles, helipads, all the things necessary for, of course, the sport of motocross, but also trail riders and, and anything uh, in between there. The key in and key out service that we have is, is mainly in place for accountability, but it also allows us to control any consumption of alcohol while on site. Um, all guests are required to key in and key out of our trail systems, our paintball park, and our motocross tracks. We have a thousand acres. It's three times larger than Bush Gardens. It's a lot of space to get lost on, so we need to know uh, where, where everybody is throughout the day, so accountability. Space, space, and more space. We have an additional 500 acres adjacent to the property for future expansion. So like most theme parks, we will uh, continue to add attractions year after year and, and grow this grow this park, uh, not just on, on uh, in attendance scale, but we, um, you know, we, we want to offer the, the most in recreation for, for all interests. The future. Future is very near. FTT will open its doors for its sneak peek festival weekend end of April with the Country Life Music Festival. Following in mid-May, we plan to hold other focused openings and a grand opening event shortly after that. Um, phase two of the park is, is going to include an RV campground with um, just under 500 RV sites. Uh, that range all the way from your social sites to your luxury sites. We will have full hookups um, and uh, private amenities offered to uh, RV camping guests only. Also in phase two is um, a zipline eco-adventure park, which will combine an eco-tour with the thrill of ziplining. Again, our, our environment inland is really spectacular. We, we focus a lot on the beaches here in, in Florida, but we don't, um, we, we don't bring the, the travelers inland um, enough to see what, what true Florida is, heritage Florida is. We, um, we have some uh, pretty amazing wildlife that's, that's stuck around. They're used to the, the construction noise. So they're, um, they're going to stay for a while, we have a feeling. Um, both of phase two develop, the phase two development is expected to complete in 2016, 2017.
and that's that's a wrap. Um, thank you for having me here today, and again to the Lee County VCB for um, giving me this opportunity to to educate you on what's to come. Um, this is certainly going to be a positive impact on the entire Southwest Florida region, not just our home county, and. Um, you know, we, we have some of the best beaches, I've been told, in the world now, not just the country. And, and now we have a new attraction to continue to bring guests to our area. Um, I'm excited to be a part of it. I am. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions? Uh, any questions, council members? Go ahead, Tony. Uh, Renee and I were talking earlier, and he wanted to run a motocross. We'll put him on the peewee track. I see that you have the rental. Do you have instruction as well? We'll put him on the peewee track with the four-year-olds. <laughs> mm -hmm. He can start there. He'll be next to me because that's where I'd be too. But you do have instruction? Uh, we will. We'll have training. We'll have training programs. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's like your new cell phone, right? They probably could teach you. It's the cutest thing in the world. It really is. Anybody Any else? other Good. questions, council members? Okay. Rachel, thank you very much. Thank you. Great to learn about a, another new opportunity to draw visitors and guests down here. And we truly have a sportsman's paradise down here. So. We do. We're excited to have everybody out and see what we've been building. It's it, it truly makes a difference when when you're able to see it because there's there's nothing like it and um, tough to visualize when you can't compare it to anything. Excellent. Thank, thank you. you. All right, uh, moving on now to the new business portion of our agenda. I'd like to ask uh, Tam to introduce the uh, item under new business today. Sure, you'll remember last month, Mayor Ruane shared with us some erosion issues um, being experienced out on Sanibel near um, the Blind Pass area. And uh, today uh, we have before you a request for some emergency uh, erosion control funding to uh, address this issue. So, um, sorry, I don't see Nancy. <laughs> Nancy might not be here. Oh, there she is. You, do you want to introduce it, Nancy? I'm sorry. We should have talked. Mm -hmm. You could tell I came in last night, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I don't. Um, I, I provided you a memo which explains with some backup from the city of Sanibel. And uh, the city manager is here if you have any questions. Basically, they're requesting a sum up to $25,000 to remedy the er uh, erosion at just south, I believe, of Blind Pass on the Sanibel Beach. And it, uh, the backup is very interesting. I hope you had time to review it. It, um, it was in approaching the road at a fast pace, but I believe Judy indicated this morning that it slowed up a bit. But um, this will provide them with funds to pull from um, should they need to go ahead and fix it quickly. They have uh, a permit in place, <coughs> and I will... There's also I know what Renee's question is going to be before he asks it. Right. The reserve balance is six point six million dollars. <laughs> 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 Sorry, maybe maybe that wasn't the question. No. Actually, uh, got a motion from Councilman Forrest Banks uh, from Fort Myers. Uh, so, Renee, I'll accept yours as a second, if that's okay. Okay, so motion from Councilman Banks and a second from Renee. Uh, any further discussion, Council members? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the discussion. Are there any objections? No objections. Motion carries unanimously. And, uh, and, you. and I will add that this is scheduled to be on the Board of County Commission agenda on Tuesday. So, it's we've We've, we assumed you were going to say yes. We would have pulled it if you had said no, but we had a feeling you were going to say yes, so we have it in process so that the funds can be made available to Sanibel as quickly as possible. Excellent. Okay, moving on to four council information. Tam, do you want to explain what we have? You have a couple of items in your packet, just some informational items that I thought might be uh, of interest to you. Uh, uh, I'm not going to belabor them. There, there is a, a, a report about the Everglades Wonder Gardens. Um, the city of Benita is working very hard with the uh, not-for-profit organization that's trying to secure Everglades Wonder Gardens to keep it uh, as a uh, attraction in, in Benita Springs rather than maybe um, a housing development or something there along the Imperial River. So there's some excitement around that. And then I'd like to share with you uh, the U.S. Travels uh, Association's Travel Outlook 
those are always good and have lots of good information. So those are in your packet. Great. Thank you very much, Tam. And uh, now let's go to TDC member items. Let's start with Pam Cronin. Any uh, items for today? You're starting with me today. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's a surprise. No, I don't have anything. You know, of course, since I'm the holiday person, we do have St. Patrick's Day coming up. So happy St. Patrick's Day to all you Irish and Wombies. <laughs> And just an FYI, you have a very special field trip out there at the Shell Factory today. Uh, my daughter, Miss Caitlin, and her class from Cape Christian Fellowship are <laughs> visiting the Shell Factory today. So. I wonder if she'll be pointing out her new park. Uh, I'm sure she will. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, they, they have a great new park at the Shell Factory for dogs and kids. If, uh, if you get a chance, check it out. Uh, thank uh, you very much. <laughs> Councilman Banks. Well, I, I saw the new county bus facility, and I hope some of our tourists will start Buses more often. Amen. Great yeah, thank you very much. Anything else? Uh, okay, Mayor Ruane? No, just thank you all for the support. I was going to item. I appreciate it very much. You. Bill? Um, not much, just thanks for the update on ITV. I unfortunately couldn't attend this year, but uh, it's good to hear that uh, we can have to do this production. We'll get you a full report coming up. but okay. Sure. Jeff Webb. Uh, your Lee County Hotel Association's uh, March lunch is going to be Thursday, the 26th at noon at the Hilton Garden Inn at GCU at the airport. Our speaker is a little different this month. It's, been, it's a topic that's been dealt with a lot with hotels across the country. So our speaker is going to be from the Human Trafficking Coalition of Southwest Florida to teach us how to identify and stop crime in the region concerning those issues. So that's going to be our speaker this month. Thanks, Jeff. Renee, anything for the board? Okay. Fran? Um, I'm just going to hand out, you heard the exciting news from Carol at the airport. Here's a copy of all the air service update. I thought you might all like to have that. And I know our mayor invited you all out for the shrimp festival this weekend. So if you need a place to park, call me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt you have any space, Fran. <laughs> yeah. Mr. County Manager, do you have anything to add for the? Thank you. Thank you. Pam, would you like to add anything? Thank you. Um, I have no comments other than to say thank you all very much for just what is obviously the start to a great year. I hope that uh, it sounds like you're certainly seeing the benefits uh, and the fruits of, uh, of, of the labor from our great team over here. And, uh, you know, we want to continue to support you all. And, you know, I don't think it's any coincidence that we're up 37% as I become chairman. I don't. <laughs> yeah. there you go. I'm kidding. That's a joke. Thank you all very much. Very yeah. Andrea, do you have anything to add? Uh, how about Colleen? Just a quick reminder that Chrysalis is on April 16th, and so that is next month. We're just a couple weeks away from that. We're very excited. Um, our winners have been chosen, and we're starting that process. We only have a couple trade show booths left if you want to do that, but if not, it's time to register and get yourself on so that you can attend. Anything else, Christine? Am I forgetting anything? You're good. All right. Rob? Nothing for me. Thanks. Okay. And Tony? Um, First of all, thanks to everybody who did contribute to the United Way. This Friday at Six Bends, they will be having a, uh, hopefully a celebration. I don't know the results, if they make gold. Uh, I will say that the Sanibel Captiva community uh, did make gold. Can, I can announce that as well. But I want to thank all the city uh, people and everybody in the county who helped contribute to the United Way and hope that you will kind of expand it again next year because certainly the needs are there. The human trafficking uh, is one of the uh, agencies that we do support. So again, on behalf of the United Way, I want to thank everybody who contributed. Thank you. And Tony, I, I will add that the VCB had 100% participation in United Way, and uh, I am participating on an allocations team next oh, week. So wonderful. good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much. If there are no objections, I'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you. And, and a friendly reminder, next month is on Friday instead of Thursday. Okay.